Hello and welcome to Let's Enter the Arena. I'm your host, VM Campos, and this is the podcast where I talk with a member of the Magic the Gathering community, where we focus on Magic Arena. I've got a returning guest this week. Please welcome back, Ben. Hi, everyone. How have you been? I've been great. Uh, how about yourself? I've been good as well, just doing the usual magic stuff, comic book stuff, all that fun stuff. Awesome, yeah. So do you have anything you'd like to promote? Any Twitch, uh, YouTube, or website, or anything you'd like? Sure, yeah. I've just gotten back into altering after my semester's ended. Um, you can find me at Lightning Hold Alters on Facebook or Instagram. Uh, just drop by and um, take a look if you're interested. Great. I hope some people go check out your work because I think those that can do uh, alters are a rare breed because that's a, a really cool talent, I think. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, it's it's very it's very fun seeing the community around it as well. It's something that um, if you if you really look, it's there. And it's kind of a cool way for people to express themselves mm -hmm. uh, just by playing with their favorite cards. Yeah. Now, uh, how many Black Lotuses have you altered? Uh, <laughs> Uh, probably never, hopefully. That's, a, that's sacred ground there. <laughs> exactly. I see sometimes there's some cards that I feel like, wow, that card's from from like original Alpha or, or uh, Arabian Nights or whatever, and people want to alter it. Well, you know, the original's quite valuable, but I guess they want their own little version of it. Right. I mean, it's unique. You're not going to see anything like that's that anywhere else ever. Um, it's it's risky, though, and it's, it's yeah. something you got to be definitely certain about before you take that plunge. Mm-hmm. So our topics for the day are we've got uh, we've got War of the Spark, which we uh, which we have the ability to play on Arena, and we've also got Modern Horizons, which at the moment you can't play on Arena, but we'll see. Fingers crossed. Right. Right. Any general thoughts on War of the Spark? Um, War of the Spark is a very interesting set in that it got me back into playing arena i've been on a bit of hiatus ever mm -hmm. since um our semester started i'm still a college student mm -hmm. and coming back out of the semester playing some more of the spark um getting those ranked matches has been a lot of fun and it's been a very different different beast than when i left off so it's been it's been interesting to say the least yeah definitely you came back for a set with a ton of planeswalkers and uh, some interesting mechanics and this whole storyline happening behind the scenes absolutely yeah so in uh, in War of the Spark, is there any uh, Planeswalker that you're enjoying at the moment? Yeah, so being a set, I believe there's 36 Planeswalkers in the set. I don't yeah. know if that counts Tezzeret or not as a buy a box promo. But um, I played a couple different decks on Arena in particular. Um, mm -hmm. Vivian, the new Vivian, the mono green three mana mm -hmm. Planeswalker has been very good for me um, in my red green kind of mid range stompy deck. Um, I've been finding a lot of success with and Gideon Blackblade is one of my favorite characters he's also proved to be very good um low to the ground aggressive threat mm -hmm. that enters early and has a big impact on the game so yeah how about you what have you seen so far I've also enjoyed playing with Gideon this is awesome yeah mm -hmm. another card another planeswalker that I that I like is Ugin the Ineffable so it's got a, got a little creature removal, got a little card advantage, uh, and colorless mana. I think it's a it's a fun card. Yeah, I've also I've actually run him as well in my Gruel Stompy deck, and he's been slightly less impressive than Vivian. I think mm -hmm. just because of the shell, his um his static ability doesn't really apply to yeah. my game plan. But just by himself, you know, he's six mana to destroy basically any other permanent. Um, mm -hmm. and if there's nothing to destroy, you just get that general card advantage. Get a body, you get that card that the body's taking when the when the creature dies. It's mm -hmm. it can steamroll out of control, which is always which is always good. It's always good to see that on a Planeswalker. Besides these Planeswalkers, are there any other cards from War of the Spark that stand out to you? Sure. Um, I really enjoyed Ilharg. Um, super fun card. Um, very much through the breach in standard. You get to play a Ronas, you get to slam Demanding Dragon. Anything with an Enter the Battlefield effect mm -hmm. can be absolutely devastating. Um, Rhythm of the Wild as well. Mm -hmm. Like You land Rhythm of the Wild into Ilharg, give it haste. It can't be countered. It's so much fun. Mm -hmm. um i don't know if you've had the opportunity to play with either of those cards well I ha i've had the pleasure of getting stomped by ilharg yep <laughs> um it definitely works well well uh on on my point of view one of the ones that i like as well 
is uh, speaking of gods, I like Oketra. So uh, that one's an interesting one for me because I kind of run a lot of cat decks and Oketra's the cat god from Amon Ket. So she's an honorary god in these cat decks. And being a mono white character, you know, she's, I guess, five or six mana. But if you're running mono color, you should be able to do it. And she's got double strike. And then, of course, if she dies, she comes back to the t uh, third from your top. But what I always forget is that when you also cast any creature, Oketra summons a 4-4 Vigilant Zombie. Right. With her stats already, she'd be super playable and limited and constructed. Maybe mm -hmm. not constructed as much as limited. Mm -hmm. But um, what's really nice about her is that she gives some longevity to some of these mono white weenie decks in crews over the time. You know, the, again, like if you try to get rid of her, she's she's back in three turns. She'll be back, yeah. So in general, uh, on a scale of uh, 1 to 10, how much are you liking War of the Spark? Um, I'd say in, li in um, standard and limited, probably an 8 or 9 out of 10. It's a very powerful limited environment. It's a very fun standard environment. Um, it's more interesting than the ones we've seen in the past. I really like the inclusion of these new Planeswalkers. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to talk as much about eternal formats, but I really I kind of have a love-hate relationship with Narset. I think she's very, very powerful, and she's a lot of fun to play, but... Mm -hmm. She's almost too much in some circumstances. I don't know. It's she feels very um was it Leovold was the mm, card sure. that got Bandit Commander. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a couple in in War of the Spark that really affect your opponent. Yeah, Narset. Your opponents can't draw more than one card. And there's another one. I think it's uh, Ashiok. Ashiok, yeah. Yeah. Opponents can't search through their libraries. So those two in a deck uh, could be pretty oppressive. Yeah, I mean, if they reprint, reprint Fetchlands in the standard at any point in the near future and Ashiok's in the standard, that card's going to see play because that card is so good against any sort of eternal Fetchland type banner base. Mm -hmm. And speaking of like voice acting and all of that, I think Ashiok has one of the best, you know, lines and and delivery in the in the Planeswalkers. It's it's like a very mysterious, raspy voice. Yeah, I really like the voice actors, especially for Arena. Um, some of them don't quite hit their mark. Um, Gideon sounds very different than how I thought he would sound in my head, but mm -hmm. I do agree. Ashiok, uh, I agree. I really like Davriel. I don't know if you've heard him yet. He's got a very yes. kind of uppity British accent. It's kind of fun. Yeah. So for myself, I'm also enjoying War of the Spark overall pretty well. Well, the other set du jour at the moment is now Modern Horizons, which at the moment isn't on Arena, and uh, fingers crossed that it get, makes it to Arena. But if not, you know, we can still play it in real life. Uh, any general thoughts on Modern Horizons? Sure, I've, um, I've got a couple. Um, I really like the set. I think the set's really cool, but as other people have voiced opinions, I don't think it's the modern set they advertise. I think it's it's definitely like a time spiral two type thing, which mm -hmm. for me, I like that almost more than having another modern set. It gives me more fun things for Commander. Um, it's super interesting, a lot of new mechanics, a lot of returning mechanics. Mm -hmm. In Modern Horizons, we get like an injection, I think, into pretty much every format. Uh, is there any card specifically then that stands out to you that you would like to include in any decks? So um, I'm pretty hyped for the new Horizon Lands. I know that's kind of a boring answer. There's a couple <laughs> other cards I think are interesting, but I love the idea of giving red, white, more card draw. I love the idea of introducing more Horizon Canopy type lands into the format, um, making it cheaper to get Horizon Canopy type effects. Mm -hmm. um, I love that land. I love its design space. The new Sisse seems really interesting. I'd always wanted to build some sort of legendary tribal, and now I can. Um, and Urza seems very powerful. There's a host of other cards that I really like, but um, how about you? What have you been looking at or brewing with? So what I like overall about the set is that there's just so many callbacks and nostalgia. And uh, there's one uh, Headless Spectre. So it's a, a single generic mana and then black black. It's a creature, Spectre. It has flying. It's a 2-2. Two -two. But it has Hellbent. Whenever Headless Spectre deals combat damage to a player, if you have no cards in hand, that player discards a card at random. So this harkens back to the totally uh, original early card Hypnotic Spectre, which was basically the same mana cost. It was also a 2-2, and it would have your opponent discard cards from their hand. One of the archetypes that I that I like playing, you know, it's too mean and all of that, but I like having people discard cards from their hand. So this harkens back to that original one, but with a little bit more safer in terms that you have to be hellbent, meaning you don't have any cards in hand before it actually has them discard their own cards. 
so I like it as a right, sort of... Right, seems to very, be very kind of Spectre, not niche, but definitely a Spectre type thing. Yeah. They've... That's kind of cool. Yeah, I, I, I like that, um, the design space. And like, I'm looking at the card now, and I always got to love... They remind me of the Lord of the Rings ring, ra- ring rates, <laughs> whenever you see them on their... They're flying dragons, or yes. Spectres, I guess. Now, what's this thing flying? It looks like a, like a huge uh, termite. What's it flying on top of? A huge oh, flea? kind of creepy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so a lot to choose from in this set, I think. A lot of callbacks, a lot of one of effects that would work well in another deck. And, uh, you know, that living the dream would be that we have get some version of Modern Horizons in Arena. Any uh, final thoughts on Modern Horizons? I'm excited. I think it'll bring some much needed refreshment to the format. I think it's interesting that we're dodging standard for the first time ever i think in the new set mm-hmm. um it'll be an experience i hope nothing is too broken i hope nothing has to get banned i hate it when cards have to get banned it's always a feels bad moment for everyone involved mm-hmm. but i want to see the format flourish i love modern i love watching modern i love playing modern and hopefully um it'll maintain some sort of semblance of a healthy format yeah, in my play group, um, everyone mostly plays modern because they keep to keep they get to keep playing with their cards. So I know that there's a lot of people in there uh, that are uh, eager to play with these. Uh, we've got Angie, the Sliver Queen. She loves slivers, so there's a bunch of new slivers that she can add to her deck and torment us with. Now, if you can quantify it, um, your hype level for Modern Horizons, what would you say on a scale from one to nine thousand? <laughs> one to nine thousand. Um. I can't say it's over nine thousand because okay. it's 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 quite the it's quite the event, right? Modern Horizons is a format. It's a set that we haven't seen in a very long time. I love Time Spiral. I love the design space. I love what they've done with Modern Horizons. I'm upset at the pack prices. They don't need to make them as expensive as they have, but mm-hmm. they still do for whatever reason. I would say I'm sitting at a solid one to nine thousand, probably a solid six or seven thousand, right? I haven't rushed out to go buy a booster box, but I'm probably I'm definitely gonna pick up some singles um, with some prices drop. The mm. new red and six looks really interesting. Maybe I'll mm. build an Oathbreaker deck around that. Mm-hmm. Some sort of degenerate um, crop rotation type thing where I play a bunch of lands and blow up everyone else's lands. <laughs> but I don't know. I'm also pretty pretty high on it, I suppose. Uh, Eight thousand or so, I suppose. Eight or seven. So, yeah, it's um, it's it's fun. It's interesting cards, cool art as usual, and I think it gives them the space to reprint uh, either older cards or maybe even functional reprints of things. That'd be nice. Hmm. Well, as we wind down, would you like to take a moment to promote anything again? Any websites or anywhere people uh, can go check you out? Sure. I mean, as I've mentioned, um, Lightning Holt Altars is my webpage currently. I took a little bit of a break this past school year, um, but I've caught up with life. I'm kind of back into it and I'm back into accepting commissions. Um, and I'm you know, back in the swing of things, you know, it's summer. It's a mm-hmm. time to kind of pursue our, our hobbies and play more magic. So it's the best time of the year. Great. I hope to have you on again a little bit sooner than uh, half a year between uh, visits. <laughs> Sure. Yeah, I'd love to love to talk again. It's always great talking with members of the community and uh, sharing opinions and experiences. Mm-hmm. As for myself, I'm over on Twitter, twittercom campos. I have a website vmcampos.com, which I should update more often. I stream every Saturday, 11 a.m. and 11 p.m. Pacific time over on YouTube. So youtube.com slash vmcamposjr. And I also do a Patreon. If people join up on the Patreon uh, for a dollar, they can get some exclusive content. If they go to the $2 range, they can actually, I'll, I'll mail them a vintage magic card from back in the day. Uh, no, not a Black Lotus. And uh, <laughs> if, even if they don't uh, subscribe, they can uh, just follow on Patreon because I consolidate all my stuff, my magic stuff, video game stuff, uh, comic book stuff, all in one place for free, and you get a lot of great free stuff. So that's one of the places, best places you can find me, patreon.com slash vmcampos. Well, Ben, thank you so much again for being on the podcast. Awesome. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. This has been a great opportunity. I hope to speak again sooner again than half a year. Yes. This has been VM Campos, and I'll see you in the arena. Take care.